Good morning, my <laughs> Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is September 15th, 2024, the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Yesterday, we celebrated the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross. That's quite a mouthful. But it means that by dying on the cross, which he willingly accepted, Jesus was exalted. In today's gospel, Jesus confides in his disciples for the first time that he would be persecuted and killed. Then turning to the entire crowd, he tells them that they must take up their crosses, for it is in sacrificing their lives that they can save them. As you ponder that question, remember this, your cross, the cross Jesus calls you to shoulder, is linked to the Holy Cross itself, which is the most beautiful sign of our salvation. Our mass intention for today is in loving memory of Francis Sharp. May she rest in peace. Our celebrant today is our pastor, Father Victor. Please silence all telephones and electronic devices. Please stand. Good morning. Good morning. 
Are we all warmed up now? <laughs> are we all warmed up now? Yes. yes. And are we all ready to praise the Lord now? Yes. And how do we do so? The Lord and the readings this morning invite us to be aware that just as Jesus carried his cross, we too have to carry ours. But to be able to do so, we rely on God's mercy. And so as we prepare ourselves for this wonderful celebration, we recall to mind our old folks. Everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Glory to God in the highest, and 
and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our hearts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I've set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let that man confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. inclined his ear to me the day I called. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the me, the snares of the netherworld seize upon me, I fell into distress and sorrow, and I called 
upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, save my life. I will walk before the St. James. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear and has no food for the day, and one of you says to him, go in peace, keep warm, and eat well, but you do not give them the necessities of the body, what good is it? So also faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Indeed, someone might say, you have faith and I have works. Demonstrate your faith to me without works and I will demonstrate my faith to you with my works. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, yeah. 
except in the cross of our Lord, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the According to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter said to him in reply, you are the Christ. Then he warned them, not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and then rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. So he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, whoever wishes to come after me, must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. Sisters and brothers, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. faith without good works from our second reading this morning and then whoever wishes to keep his life must be willing to lose it says the gospel this woman's name was Agnes 
And she was a woman, a woman who was very, very ordinary. Very, very ordinary in some ways, but also a woman who was very, very extraordinary in all of the important avenues of life. This woman was born in Macedonia. And this woman learned from her youth the fundamental elements of faith, including what the gospel and the second reading tells us about this morning. Not just learning about the elements, the fundamental elements of her faith, it included her need to act on her faith. In other words, to follow up her faith with works. This woman began to practice her faith in a special context at the age of 18 when she joined the Sisters of Our Lady of Loreto that was headquartered in Ireland. And after a few months, this woman was sent by her religious superiors in Ireland to Darjeeling in India to complete her initial formation to become a nun or a reverend sister. This woman's first assignment was to teach in a Catholic school in Calcutta. And there, there while she was teaching, in other words, while she was experiencing the challenges of her life as a nun within that community, she experienced the poverty the pain of her students and of course of those who lived in that area. One day while on the train traveling from Calcutta to Darjeeling, she felt that she received a new and powerful calling to serve the sick, to serve the dying, the hungry, the naked, and the homeless. Her role with that thought, with that calling, she saw as her whole role as to put her God-loving faith into action. In this particular context, for the poorest of the poor. Her religious name, as you all know, all nuns change in those days, I don't know about these days, change their name, their baptismal or name given at birth by also choosing a name for being a nun. And Agnes chose as her religious name, Teresa. And then after a while she sought and received the permission from the then Pope, Pope Pius XII, to leave the Loreto sisters and start her own congregation. And this was the beginning, if you like, the genesis of the missionaries of charity and the start of the very famous and inspiring ministry of Mother Teresa of Calcutta. 
now known as St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And for the next 45 years, Mother Teresa and her community brought the love of God to those who had nothing. And today, almost 5,000 missionaries, if not more, of charity minister to God's poor in well over 130 countries. And like Mother Teresa, today's readings challenge us, challenge us to demonstrate our faith, not just to have faith, because having faith without works accompanying it is empty. As we are told, faith without works is dead. In the first reading, the prophet Isaiah speaks of a servant, a servant who will suffer at the hands of persecutors and yet will not rebel or turn back from what he set out to do. And this servant we call the suffering servant. Yes, he will experience full abuse of the world, and yet he will not fail in his mission. And why? Why will he not fail in his mission? It's because God is present and will not allow this servant to be disgraced or to be put to shame. God is the help and the refuge of those who seek him. He tried to be faithful to God. He tried to be faithful to what he preached. He tried to be faithful to what he believed. To be faithful not only to I believe, but most importantly to I do. In the gospel this morning, therefore, we hear St. Peter confess the faith or his faith in Jesus, saying, you are the Messiah. You are the Messiah. The use of that word, you, means an establishment of an interpersonal relationship. The use of the word are, that means that he is aware that this person with whom he has this relationship is indeed who he says he is, the Messiah. And the Messiah, of course, as we all know, the man who was sent to be our savior, the man who was supposed to be and realize who is the fulfillment of salvation history. Immediately, therefore, when Peter said, you are the Christ, Jesus reveals to him what the future will hold for him, not only for the Messiah, but for all who follow, all who follow in the footsteps of the Messiah. Now we, who bear Christ's name, who bear Christ's name as Christians, yes, we may not suffer a physical cross, but we must suffer a denial of self. Pick up our own crosses and follow Christ. And when we say denial of self, it does not mean that we should not take care of ourselves because as we all know, charity begins at home. If you don't love yourself, how can you love someone else? But we all know that being a disciple is not easy. To be a Catholic, a believer, to have faith and to maintain that faith with good works 
is not easy. But we also know that God is with us. That God is with us through the ups and downs, the highs and the lows, the agonies and the ecstasies of our lives. We who follow Jesus, yes indeed, we will suffer. But Jesus, as God was with Jesus, and as Jesus was with humanity, we who follow Jesus, he will be with us even though we suffer. Life itself or life will throw us all sorts of twists and turns that may not always be favorable. But we are reminded this morning and indeed encouraged that we must not lose heart. Jesus walked a road which brought him much pain, including the emotional trauma of being rejected by his own people. And of course, he faced the physical torture of Roman crucifixion. How can we transform the Christian vocation to God's call to a life that at times brings us suffering? This morning, St. James tells us that our response must be to live a life of active faith. A life of active faith. Our actions and works demonstrate the faith that we possess. And it includes the simple things to the much more complex things or experiences as we try to nurture the relationship that we have with our God through Christ. And like every relationship, to be meaningful, to be beneficial, and to make us fulfilled must be meaningful. If it is not meaningful, then we are just, as I said the other day, noisy gongs. Our faith must be meaningful, and it must have actions to be meaningful. As the apostle says, faith that is not practiced is thoroughly lifeless. Sometimes you hear people say, I am a Catholic father. Oh, okay. You are a Catholic? But I don't see you in church. Yeah, well, you know, there is nothing to know. Either you have the faith and you practiced it to nurture your relationship with God or you don't. So how might we manifest our Christian vocation to follow Jesus? And yes, indeed, the reality is, and to suffer. It's not easy. When there is heavy snow, it's not easy. When it is raining heavily outside, it's not easy. When the Saturday the evening before, you went out on a party, enjoyed it, which is good, and came home very tired, and in the morning, Sunday morning, to wake up and to come to church, it's not easy. All of these, are not easy, but we have to, we have to. So how might we manifest our Christian vocation to follow Jesus and to suffer with him? In other words, to have the challenges of the inconveniences of what I just mentioned. We do so, yes, principally by, first of all, loving ourselves and living for others. Parents live for their children. Teachers, physicians, and other professionals 
live for their students, for their patients, or other clients. Young people can live for those with whom they associate regularly, whether they are found in the classroom, on the playground, or in the family room at home. As we reflect on God's word to us this morning, let us remember as our background, the story I started with, the story of Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa of Calcutta became an international celebrity, not because she was rich or powerful, but because of her quiet, unassuming dedication to her faith. Her faith shown in action. Actions that are not only applauded, but are popularly recognized today. Mother Teresa took up the cross of Jesus by helping the poor. Helping the poor carry their crosses. She lived an active faith and challenged the world to follow her lead. So as we reflect on our gospel, our readings this morning, let us take up our own cross and follow our master. Knowing that our master does not promise us a rose garden today, but rather the promise of eternal life tomorrow. This life, being a Christian, being a Catholic, is not easy, but is it something that can easily be done once we allow our faith to be nurtured and accompanied by good works. Amen. And so, for sisters and brothers, inspired by the word of God we have heard, we express and profess our faith as we say, I believe Amen. in one God, the, the Father, Father the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one God, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. And for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became flesh. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophet, I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. First one, baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, today we heard the psalmist declare that the Lord has heard my voice in supplication. So we now lift our own voices in supplication. Yes, confident that the Lord will hear us. We pray for the church that we may reach out to assist all those who find their crosses too difficult to shoulder. 
especially those who have lost hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are running for political office, that they may hear the cries of the poor and the marginalized, both now and during their terms of office, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who have no food, for a good meal or clothing to wear, or a home to call their own, that we may respond with compassion and assistance, sacrificing our own plenty to share with others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the catechists, that through their invitation, their witness, and their instruction, that they may shine the light of understanding upon those who are open to being better disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the people of this faith community, that in denying ourselves and sacrificing all that we can, we may make the difference in the lives of those who would otherwise go hungry, homeless, or impoverished. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Our mass intention for today is in loving memory of Francis Sharp. Rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the sick. Kevin Anderson, Jacqueline Logan Figueroa, Angie O'Keefe, Nellie Stewart, Teresa Lewis, Elisa Johnson, Flavia Lagan, Anne Marie Jerner Dupree, Patricia Harris Pitt, Brian Rouse, Tony James, Georgiana Butler, Deirdre Rawl, Mark Gayaway, and Joanne Thomas. Let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy and compassion, your son challenges us to take up our crosses, having taken up the Holy Cross to win our salvation. Grant us the strength and the will to carry our crosses and the selflessness to help others with theirs through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Since I met the Lord, my mind is made up. My mind is made up. I've got to see my Jesus all the way. All the way. I'm on the right track. There is no turning back. Oh, I'm so satisfied with God. Nobody can hold me. Nobody can hold me. Nobody can hold me like you, Jesus. Since I met the Lord, my mind is made my up. Mind is made up. I've got to see my Jesus all the way. All the way. I'm on the right track. The right there track. is There's no turning back. Oh, I'm, I'm so satisfied, satisfied with God. Nobody, nobody can hold me. Nobody, nobody can hold me. Nobody, nobody can hold me like you. Jesus, go out so many things in my life, but I am, I am so satisfied. I never turn my back on God because I am, I am so 
satisfied. I took my faith away from men and placed it in my Savior's hands. Nobody, nobody can hold me. Nobody, nobody can hold me. Nobody, nobody can hold me like you, Jesus. Throughout so many things in my life, but I am I am so satisfied. I never turn my back on God, cause I am I am so satisfied. I took my faith away from man and placed it in my Savior's hands. Nobody, nobody can hold me. Nobody, nobody can hold me. Nobody, nobody can hold me like you, Jesus. Since I met the Lord, my mind is made up. My mind is made up. I've got to see my Jesus all the way. All the way. I'm on the right track. The right there track. is There's no turning back. Oh, I'm so satisfied with God. Nobody can hold me. Nobody can hold me. Nobody can hold me like you, Jesus. Nobody can hold me. Nobody can hold me. Nobody can make me. No, no, nobody can show me. No, no, nobody can nobody can hold me. Nobody can help me. No, no, nobody can shake me. Nobody can move me. Since I met the Lord, my mind is made up. I've got to see my Jesus all the way. All the way. I'm on the right track. Since I met the Lord, my mind is made up. I've got to see my Jesus all the way. All the way. I'm on the right track. I'm on the right track. There is no turning back. Oh, I'm so satisfied with God. Nobody can hold me. Nobody can hold me. Nobody can hold me like you. pray my dear friends that my and your sacrifice may be acceptable to God our almighty father may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church amen look with favor on your our supplications O Lord and in your kindness accept these your servants offerings that what each of us has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering, he canceled out our sins. And by rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end. We are clean. Blessed is he who 
comes in the name of the Lord God of all. Oh, 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 for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to all of his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and a drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and the Timothy, our Bishop, and all your clergy and religious. And remember also our brothers and sisters, and relatives and friends who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with St. Aloysius, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let the 
spoken the word to our hearts. So sisters and brothers, as worthy followers, we are proud to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and so indeed we are the apostles of these days, peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on our faith and the faith of our church, and graciously grant her and us your peace and unity in accordance with your holy will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. And let us now sincerely offer each other some sign of peace. the Messiah. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Happy. 
and may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life.
turn back oh my God he's my joy my God he's my savior my God yes I love him I know he's there forever 
of this heavenly gift, O oh Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and our bodies so that its effects and not only our desires would always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. So you be seated for a few minutes. It's so nice to hear your voice, Mr. Copley. So nice to hear your voice once again. Praise Jesus. Praise him. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. <laughs> Our offertory envelopes Weekly offertory envelopes will be available on Sunday, September 29th. 2024 Pierre Toussaint Awards Dinner will be held November 4th at the Gustavino at 409 East 59th Street. Please call the rectory. Okay. Registration for the 2024-25 Religious Education Program has begun. Please see Ms. Benice Hunter or Father Victor. And I have a note from the clusters meeting September 14, 24 from Sharice White regarding the parade. Today marks the 75th annual African American Day Parade which will be broadcast live for the first time on Channel 7 WABC at 12.30 p.m. The parade starts at 112th Street through 136th Street. Catholic Charities has generously provided a float to feature 15 to 20 members from our sister churches. Participants will assemble at 111th Street and St. Nicholas Boulevard before proceeding to 110th Street and Central Park West between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. We are the entry number 10 in the parade and organizers are committed to ensuring a prompt start. Everyone is encouraged to attend and support this landmark event in the Amer African American community. The parade will showcase banners of the six African Americans who we would like to be canonized as saints and information about all the churches in the parish will be distributed. This is a wonderful opportunity for outreach, photo registration, fellowship, and enjoyment. May you have a blessed Sunday. The communion song this morning I think it's very, very apropos in terms of addressing our politics today. 
and it says there is no Jew, no Gentile, that we are all one, one bread. I hope that our politics today will preach that concept or that idea and bring us together. So let us continue to pray that that idea will take hold. Um, this is the last Sunday before the celebration of the 125th anniversary with the bishop, which will be here next Sunday at 11 o'clock. So you are all invited. You are all invited and it's free. However, after the Mass, we're going to have a reception at the Williams Institution Christian Methodist Church Hall, which is just around the corner. Uh, that we need you to let us know whether you're coming. And that was what RSVP means. So if you're going to come, not just not to the Mass, also to the reception, you have to let us know because we'll let you in by name. Okay? So if you're interested in coming to the reception, call the rectory and give your name to uh, our secretary, Yvonne. Then on Saturday, by the way, that's, that's on Sunday, okay? On Saturday, we have the dinner dance. I am told that there are still more tickets available. So please, if you would like to attend, which would be nice. There are people who are coming out of town uh, actually, my relations are coming from out of town, from California, and also from uh, Arkansas. So please, to be nice, that we are, in terms of presence, we are in the majority. Not those, our guests will be in the majority, okay? We are their hosts. Also call the rectory and let uh, the secretary know. If you're also interested in tickets, we have tickets available immediately after this Mass in the Scanlon Room. So if you're interested in any of these activities, the concert, which is on Friday, the dinner dance on Saturday, and then the reception after the Mass, we can give you that information and the tickets immediately after Mass in the Scanlon Room. We had the dinner meeting, the first dinner meeting for this year on Thursday. And of course, you know, the dinner now is made up of 25 parishes. It's called Manhattan North Dinner. From all the way, the top, uptown Manhattan, all the way to 96th Street, all the parishes make up one dinner. And we had a meeting with the bishop. And these are the things, what, what I consider to be the most important announcement by the bishop. And that is, there's going to be the merging of parishes. Not the closing of parishes, but the merging of parishes. And that is going to happen very, very, very soon. And in terms of our cluster that is made up of four parishes, there is one parish that is being talked about as merging with some other parish. That parish I do not know. So I'm just letting you know that that is going to come soon. Also, he mentioned that going to be random auditing of parishes. Random means they'll just decide, give you a notice that, okay, we're coming to your parish to audit. All right. Well, the, a few years back, we were audited. And by the way, who audits? The, the state of New York audits you know, our financial situation or the, our financial policies. And uh, the last time they came to audit St. Aloysius, uh, I made the report also available to the parish council then. And uh, we, you know, our practices were, uh, you know, were clear and very, very positive. So I'm hoping if they tell us they're coming for another audit, I'm ready. Okay? Um, they also, we, say Senior Recognition Day is around the corner. And usually the tradition is each parish will nominate two candidates, all right, that will be recognized. So if you know of anybody within this English community that you think should be recognized, give me a call. I mean, when I say give me a call, don't speak to nobody else. Let me repeat that. 
gave me a call. Don't speak to nobody else, all right? If you think you have someone who merits being recognized, and that person has to be a senior, give me a call as soon as possible because I do not want to hear. Oh, Father, I thought, uh -oh, this is the time to give me a call. If you don't give me a call, then how do they say it? Zip? All right. Yes. Now, let me tell what do you think is the age for, to define a senior? No, 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 just what do you think? Remember what Jesus asked Peter today, whom do you think I am? What do you think, Robbie? I'll say 65. 65, and that's what it is, 65. You agree, see? We're on the same, on the same boat. All right. Um, so that's it. By the way, Pierre Dussault, the scholarship is around the corner, and this year is going to be special. That's all I will say right now. This year, it is going to be special. And so if you are interested in going, please let me know as soon as possible, because I will only have, we only have 10 people to a table, and we are only having a table. OK? Anyone worshiping for the first time with us today, could you please? Tell us where you're from. We are a welcoming parish. Yes, sir. Tell us who you are and where you're from. From Poland and your brothers. Welcome. Welcome. Now, as brothers, are you twins or one is older than the other? He's older than you. And you are speaking for him. Okay. Oh, oh, no English. Oh, all right. Okay. But that's English you spoke to me. Thank you. <laughs> Who else is with us for the first time? Yes. Where are you from? From Italy. Welcome. Welcome. Yes, sir. From Italy, too. Okay. You were looking, you were looking, you were looking straight, hoping that I will see you. Where are you from? From Belgium. Okay, I asked you before. I think you said you came from the French part of Belgium. Is that the French part better than the English part? Yeah? Well, it was, yeah, it was always say yes, you know. Because where you are is always better than where other people are. Yes, sir. You're also from France. What part of France? Paris. You're from Lourdes. Oh, wow. Wonderful. How is it in Lourdes? Huh? A lot of miracles there? It is the miracle that brought you. You don't understand. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, okay. My French is not very good to say miracles. Hang on. So. English, no. Well, you're speaking English. Don't worry. We understand. Okay. Welcome. You have a little. Huh? Only a little. Okay. Very good. Even the little will work. And it's working indeed. Okay. Any other person with us for the first time today? All right, we thank God. Yes, that's the, it's a good question. The point is we are in communication with Miss Washington, who is in charge of, and she hasn't gotten back to us, even as of yesterday, I mean it's Friday. The secretary kept asking. So just give us, we'll let you know. Those who are bringing food, we'll let you know. Okay? Otherwise, otherwise, if you don't hear from us, bring the food here. Okay? Because it's just across the street. Yes.
For Jesus a long time. I'm not tired yet. I've been running for Jesus a long, long time. I'm not tired yet. I've been working for Jesus a long time. I'm not tired yet. I've been working for Jesus a long, long time. I'm not tired yet. I've been singing for Jesus a long time. I'm not tired yet. I've been singing for Jesus a long, long time. I'm not tired yet. I've been running by day and praying by night. I'm not tired yet. Well, I gotta keep going in somebody hard fight. I'm not tired yet. No.